Okay, so let's talk about the new major release of Cerebral. This will be release 5 and there are quite a few changes. Um, that said, uh, migrating to this release should not be uh, a huge effort, uh, but conceptually we're making some changes. So let's go through this. Um, the focus of this release has been to mostly like always like to simplify the API uh, more so uh, make the API consistent in this release uh, also making the API more approachable there are quite a few terms in Cerebral uh, that might not really be necessary um, and it has its own terms instead of using uh, common terms uh, and I'll get more into that and then there has been a focus of reducing the scope of Cerebral. Uh, and this has a little bit to do with uh, the history of Cerebral because there's been so much experimentation and exploration, but also the fact that uh, like my personal life changes. Um, I have a kid, I don't have that much time to put into uh, Cerebral and I don't think it makes sense to build like a big framework like cerebral should not be a framework it should be on the level of mobex and redux like this simple thing that uh, allows you to build a ton of custom stuff on top of it um, so that brings me to the first big change because um, now you can imagine like function tree is the core of cerebral uh, cerebral extends function tree and then we have cerebral which basically just introduces a state store and, um, uh, and that's basically what it does. It's function tree with a state store and a more approachable API. And then we have all these add-ons. Uh, one thing is all the views. Uh, those should be part of the Cerebral core or like uh, part of the Cerebral uh, project. But then we have all these other things. Uh, like if you remember AngularJS, uh, and even Angular now, now, I suppose, includes like a, a way to do HTTP, a way to do different things. Well, if you look at Mobex and Redux, none of them introduce like uh, how to do HTTP requests, how to do routing and all this stuff. And this adds so much maintenance burden on the project and it makes the project look a lot bigger than what it really is. So what I want to do with Cerebral for this next release is just remove the add-ons and rather focus on how to build your own providers because both HTTP and routing, as I mentioned, is very, very easy to do. Uh, and you can choose whatever technology or not technology, but whatever third party library you want to use uh, and you can custom tailor it to your application. Um, so I think I have, yeah, so I have a couple of examples here. So if you want to expose HTTP, um, uh, like if you want to expose the ability to do requests in your Cerebral application, you can just expose Axios, for example. So you want to do get, post, put, and delete requests. That's the API your application needs. Maybe you would even not call it like this generic HTTP. Maybe you would call it like API, for example. And you would have get user, get items, get whatever. And this provider would maybe hold the token uh, needed to do these requests and uh, all this stuff. And I think that makes a ton more sense than trying to maintain like a generic HTTP provider, which basically just does uh, what existing um, third-party libraries do. And the same thing for the router. The router has been a really cool project because uh, it's the approach of how to do routing, uh, which is to uh, like trigger application logic first and then the views update. Uh, but some people don't like that approach and that's perfectly okay. Uh, and, I, and I just don't think it makes sense to include a router with Cerebral. Um, it's been great for experimentation and I'm, I'm proud of the project. But again, it's a maintenance burden. Um, so this is an example where uh, we just use the page.js library uh, where you just hook up the routes. You go and grab uh, a sequence to run when that route triggers. And this um, 
this sequence will receive the context of page, uh, page.js, which holds the, like, the locations, the params, the queries, everything. And then you can do whatever you want with it. And like, this doesn't give any maintenance burden to the project itself. And it opens up for you to choose as a developer what routing solution you want. OK. Um, and then it's all these terms. Like in Cerebral, we have controllers, signals, sequences, actions, operators, modules, and computing. And where we differ a lot is uh, the term controller, the term signals. Um, sequences is also uh, relatively um, not that common. Uh, actions is quite common. Operators is not common at all. Uh, modules is quite common and computed is quite common. Uh, so what I want to do here um, is I want to change the concept of a controller to be just an app. Like you create a cerebral app, you fire up an app. And then I want to remove the concept of signals altogether because signals is just a word in cerebral now. Uh, it doesn't have any logic attached to them because a signal is a sequence. So it makes a ton more sense to just stick with the sequences uh, term and don't talk about signals at all. So when you define a module, you attach sequences to it. When you look in the debugger, you see a list of sequences that has triggered, not signals. Uh, of course, we keep uh, actions. And then instead of operators, well, we just call them factories because that's what they are. Because um, it's a functional approach. And it's a function that creates a function. It's a factory. Um, and that just makes it more precise. And we don't introduce just some cool word just to differ ourselves. I think it's more important to be similar to other projects than trying to uh, like make up new cool stuff um, in terms of words. Um, and then we have modules and, and computer, which is perfectly fine. So this is the way I want people to feel when they uh, fire, like when they see how to build a cerebral app. It's just create an app, and then you have the main module, where you have state sequences and all that stuff. And this is very similar to how, uh, for example, Vue does it. Vue is very simplistic. Uh, and the reason we have been playing around with factories for modules and stuff has been this exploration of TypeScript. And for me, it's been a learning experience. Um, but it has gotten a little bit out of hand with the previous version. So I think it's important to get back to this, the simplicity of things and make Cerebral really approachable. And so it doesn't feel like this big framework. Um, so yeah, what to take away from here is that, as I said, the controller is now app. Um, and you don't have to use this module factory anymore. You create an object or you create a function to, to define a module. OK, and then we have the actions. So currently, we have like we have the controller. So if you want to fire off like what was called a signal, you would have to point the controller and grab the signal from there. If you're going to do state changes, you would point to state. If you wanted to resolve tags or computed, um, you would have to use the resolve provider. And if you wanted to change the state of the module, you would have to use the module provider. So what I want uh, already have done, really, is to remove all of these and introduce two providers, get and store. Store is the state store. And get is a way to grab whatever values you want. Like You can give it a string if you want to do that, and you'll just get the string back. But you can also provide it with um, like a state tag or a, a sequences tag, which it's called now. Uh, or a computed tag, and you will get the value from it. So as we can see uh, as an example here, we are importing uh, uh, what we call uh, proxies. Just I'll, I'll talk about that very soon, but uh, just think of them as tags. So you just import state, uh, and now instead of module, you have module state, because you also have module computed, you have module sequences. 
Um, and then, yeah, computed and sequences, as you see here. And then uh, you have store and get as the two providers. And in this case, to grab the foo state, you just say get state foo. To grab the computed, you say computed, uh, get computed my computed. And if you want to grab a sequence, you can do that with sequences. Um, and then when you want to change the state of the application, you point to the store. And you have the same uh, methods for changing the state. Um, but you give them these tags instead, like state.foo or module state.items. And then it's this proxy thing. So the tags are super powerful, but it's not uh, the ideal syntax because it's strings. So they can get a little bit verbose when you compose them together. So for example, when you point to state and then you compose in uh, props ID, for example, or something like that, it's a little bit verbose. Um, but the most important thing is that uh, strings can't be typed. But with this proxy concept, you use them the same way, but you use normal dot notation. And we are actually able to type it. Um, so here you see a list of all the, um, all the proxies. I actually forgot one here, which is props. Oops. Um, but yeah, so you have state, module state, computed, module computed. Uh, sequences and module sequences. And then you have this path uh, thing, uh, which I'm not going to talk about. Um, um, just imagine it's not there, it's props <laughs> instead. Um, and then it's uh, a change to compute. It's now called computed. And I've done some uh, work on um, um, on making things consistent. So one of the big new features of Cerebral is that we have a generic watch concept. So you can watch state. And by watching state, you are able to compute the right state. You are able to react to changes to the state. And of course, you can uh, connect to state and uh, uh, like with views as, as you normally do with connect. Oh. But my point here is that now these are the same thing. You have computed where you have the dependencies. It's, it doesn't have this insanely complex signature. <laughs> it's just the same as everything else. Um, and all of them receives this uh, get uh, property, which allows you to dynamically go and grab stuff. So inside your computed, your reaction, or inside your component, like your view, you're able to use this get property to um, and give it like state.foo, for example, to, ju to just grab it. Um, exactly like you do inside the action. So this is all about consistency. One part is the signatures of uh, these things you see on the screen here, but also this get property, uh, allowing you to use the proxies to go and grab whatever value you want inside Cerebral. Uh, one cool thing about uh, Connect, though, is that you also have this reaction. So you can create reactions and add them to your modules if you want to do that. Um, but then you also have the possibility to create a reaction inside your component. So a re reaction is just um, a way to look at state. And when that state changes, you can trigger a side effect. So for a reaction, you add to your module, you might want to trigger a sequence related to some state change. While inside the component, you maybe want to point to um, to the component itself. Maybe there's a method you want to call whenever some state changes. Um, yeah, so that uh, helps you do that kind of stuff. Mm. What's amazingly cool about this is that all of this is actually tracked in the debugger, which is also part of this new release. OK, and then we have on connect. It's actually now in the next release possible to, of course, connect as normal to uh, stateless components or classes or whatever. But you don't actually have to do that. Now you can actually dynamically grab uh, state and computed from, uh, from inside the component, and it will actually track it. 
So you can choose if you want to do like more of a MobX approach where you dynamically just grab the state you need uh, at the point you need it, and it, the component will just automatically re-render. Or you can be explicit about uh, setting the dependencies at the top and kind of like get a bit more control of it. Uh, nice. And then finally, I want to talk about TypeScript. So um, Cerebral now supports TypeScript in the core, which is super awesome, and it looks really nice. Um, so the way uh, this is introduced on the new website is that you can choose how far you want to go with TypeScript. Uh, so first of all, you have to prepare the typing. It's just a file you create, really. And then you go ahead as a first step, you can type your state. Um, and that means you will have that state available uh, when you point to it in components, for example, or when you use it in actions, you will have that uh, typing available, like the auto suggestions. And also when you use the store, it will tell you if you are trying to, for example, um, you have typed uh, a path uh, as a string, and then you try to set a number, it will actually tell you that you can't do that, which is pretty cool. Uh, but the next step after uh, typing the state, you can actually type the sequences as they look now. You don't have to move to this chaining API. You can actually type sequences. And at this level, well, I'll, I'll get into that. And then it's about typing the components themselves um, with uh, like uh, external props and stuff. And then you can type the actions so that you actually get information about the providers you're using. And then you can go full on with the, uh, with the chain API. So um, let's look at uh, preparing the typing first. So you create this file called cerebro.proxy.ts. And inside this file, you just import all the proxies. And then you prepare the state, the sequences, and computed um, types. Well, you don't need the sequences if you're not going to type them, but uh, um, but yeah, you should. <laughs> and then uh, basically what you do, you just export these uh, proxies again, but you but um, what's it called? You cast <laughs> a type on them. So on state, we cast the state type and the sequences and the computer. So yeah, you, you see how this works. Um, and then uh, you do some configuration in your tsconfig file, just so you can directly import Cerebral Proxy. And then when you type your state, you do that typically in a types file. Um, so you have your main module and a types file. And then you type your state and you export it. When it comes to computed and sequences, you don't really have to type them explicitly. You can just use this signature here, which just um, so a computer will automatically type itself based on the return value. So when you do this kind of thing here, it's automatically typed. Uh, so whenever you add a new computer from the com in the computers file, you will have it available, uh, typed and ready. Um, yeah, and then when you define your uh, oh, I forgot to update this. Uh, so when you you don't really need this module anymore. <laughs> Anyways, um, so when you update, oh, let me change this. Uh, let's see. Do I have it? Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt there. Uh, the point is that when you want to type your state, you type it in a variable, and then you add it to the module, like this. And then. Um, in the Cerebral Proxy file, you will import the types, all the types from each of the modules you have created, and then you compose it together like this. So if you have a um, main module and a sub-module called module A, for example, you just type it together uh, like this, and it just works. And so there's a little bit of wiring, but it's very little wiring compared to other projects. And then we have step two, which is typing sequences. 
And basically what this means is that every sequence you expose, like you attach to the module, you just use sequence. You have to use this sequence factory. That's all. And then um, when you want to uh, define that this sequence requires a payload, you just give it that type. So the type here, uh, foo uh, string, will now, when you point to my sequence from a component now, it will tell you that this sequence requires um, you to pass in foo of type string. Pretty cool. And that's all. And now you, you have the most important typing of, of sequences. <coughs> and then it's the components. So if you have a component with dependencies, you will have to define them outside of the connect. And the reason is what you see here. Uh, you define dependencies, and then you create a stateless component. And then you use type of depths and connected props. And this gives you automatic typing of whatever you put inside depths. Um, and the connected props are the get and the reaction. So you get that typing. OK? And then it's the same with classes. You have the depths outside. You use type of and connected props. And then that's OK. And then it's dependencies and external props. Mm. So what you do then is you create the external props as a type. You have the depths. And then you just um, um, type the component to use all of the, like the props, the depths, and the connected props. And then you tell the connect that these props here are the external props. And then you're all good. Like from the outside, you only have to pass in what's on the props. But on the inside, you have access to everything. And it's the same with the class. Nothing special about that. And then you have, uh, if you choose to go uh, with dynamic dependencies, like where you don't um, express the dependencies, you just use the connected props. <coughs> and it's the same with the external props here. You use it on the connect. OK. And then it's typing the actions. So when you type the actions, you want to define a context. So what you do is you bring in the eye context. Uh, oh, another doc error. It's not a, ignore the branch context. You just need eye context. Oh. And then you have your typed providers. And you just say the context is eye context and the providers. And in your actions, you just import the context and you put it explicitly in your actions. So then you will have a typed store and any providers you have defined. That's basically it. And then you can go, um, and at this level, you have a ton of type safety. I would say this is uh, like to step four, that's, that's really where you get most value. Um, and then you can take one step further and introduce the chaining API. Now, this actually changes the code quite a bit. And the benefit is that you actually get full type safety in the sequences, meaning that you will uh, always be able to infer what's available on the props. Um, you will be able to, uh, um, like TypeScript throws errors if you compose a sequence into another sequence and the current sequence doesn't have the props available for the composed sequence to handle them <coughs> or the requirements of the composed sequence. But um, the way you do this at, is that you have to introduce some more stuff. So you have eye context. You also now need eye branch context. You have chain sequence factory and chain sequence with props factory. But it's basically the same stuff. You just uh, <coughs> type it out there with the context. And then when you create your sequences, you use this uh, other sequence factory where you give the callback and then you have the actions there. And this gives you full um, inference of props and everything. It's, it's really, really cool. Though, as you can see, it does have a cost on syntax. Um, but it's totally up to you how far you want to go with this. Um, yeah. 
It just talks about how to do different things, not that uh, important. So as you can see, there are quite a few changes to Cerebral. I, I think after this release, things will be a lot simpler. Um, it will be a lot easier to approach Cerebral because uh, the way we uh, introduce it introduce it is a lot simpler. The API is a lot simpler. The API is a, is a lot more consistent. It's more consistent than it has ever been. Um, and also from a maintainability perspective, uh, it's it's really nice to to kind of like land on what is Cerebral. And Cerebral is uh, an extension of Function Tree that introduces a state store and a nice coherent API for making those state changes and, um, and adding providers. It's nothing more than that. If um, people want to create uh, providers or modules to help other people um, use them in their applications, feel totally free to do that. But I think it's very important that those things don't live inside the monorepo because it puts a burden on the project and it's a burden that will just stress out everyone. Um, but it has been important to, to include it in the monorepo now because there's been so much exploration to figure out the API and how, how this can be used in the best possible way. Um, cool. I think that's all I wanted to say. Uh, thanks for having a look and good luck with the uh, migration. <laughs>